Hi, I'm Ingrid Stairs and I'm the astronomy advisor. I'll talk a little bit now about the various specializations we have, as well as uh, you know, what you can do with a, an astronomy and or combined honors physics and astronomy degree. So we have the majors option, which is uh, very good for you know, going on either into industry or into sort of astronomy related, but not necessarily research science positions, things like working at an observatory or at a planetarium or things like that. If you're thinking that you might want to go on and be a, uh, an actual research astronomer, then you should be thinking about the combined honors physics and astronomy program instead. Um, you know, obviously you have the 449 thesis in that uh, program, but it's also just there's a you know, larger set of courses you need to take and um, it's the, really the preparation you need to go on to graduate school. We do also, of course, have a co-op and a minor, and uh, you can do astronomy in the combined major in science as well. So we just look over the courses. Uh, we have courses offered at every level. Um, one thing I would like to specify is that the, the 100 level courses, 101, 102, are optional. You do not have to have taken those in order to go on into astronomy specializations, right? So in particular, um, the uh, you know you'll get a bit of background there but it won't really give you an advantage over other students heading into astro 200 and 205. so 200 which i am co-teaching with professor Alison man this fall is really the beginning of our astronomy specializations and you take that as both a majors and an honor student in fact you'll see that there are a lot of things that are required in both um, there's some things where majors get a choice, and then of course the, the thesis program, uh, the honor students have to take that. But otherwise, you know, there are a few requirements for the majors, and then you'll need to make up a certain number of upper level credits out of optional choices from these or other upper level science and or arts courses. So, you know, the things here are required for honor students. One thing I will point out is that the Astro 404 and 405 have prerequisites of Physics 301 and Physics 408, the optics course. So you want to make sure you get the Physics 301 and Physics 408 in your third year, if at all possible. Otherwise, it will take you a bit longer to graduate. So we have lots of fun opportunities for research in astronomy as well. I mean, even as an undergraduate, if you take the 404 and 405 courses, 405 in particular, you'll get to use actual telescopes. So we have had a small telescope in Chile that's being upgraded by professors Aaron Boley and Paul Hickson and Harvey Richer. Um, so that's uh, going to be working soon-ish for uh, the Astro 405 lab. Um, and we do also have a small radio telescope on the roof of HEB, which we also use in the 405 lab. So you look at uh, the galactic hydrogen, for example, using that telescope. More than that, though, in the 449 project or 349, if you take that, or summer research, you can really get involved in a whole range of different uh, research opportunities because we have people working on just about everything. Uh, we've got LIGO, we have radio astronomy in the form of CHIME. Well, Arecibo is kind of dead now, but there's still some legacy data that you might want to look at with me. Green Bank, um, CFHT, Gemini, Hubble, Kepler, Chandra, VLOT, uh, whatever that form that takes and Square Kilometer Array are down the road. JWST is coming online soon, and a few people here have uh, allocated time on that. Of course, you can uh, work with their theory-focused professors as well. There are lots of things that uh, you can do. Don't be shy to reach out to us and uh, get in touch. As I said, we cover the, the whole range. We go from planetary science all the way to cosmology and, and you know everything in between. So we can probably uh, get you into a research project. Arecibo is, of course, defunct now, but uh, this, as I said, still some data kicking around that you might want to, uh, to look at. There's just a listing of our various astronomy faculty members. Not all of them will be taking on undergraduate students or, or even graduate students at this point, but um, ask, uh, ask around. Don't be shy to send emails. I'll point out in particular our two newest faculty, Alison Mann, working on observational studies of galaxies, and Jessica McIver, working on gravitational waves with LIGO. The rest of us have been around for, for quite a long time in most cases, um, but, uh, you know, we're mostly all still very keen to take on students and, and have lots of ideas for research projects. So, as I said, don't be shy about contacting us. And I'll just uh, leave the last page here. There are a few links you can follow for astronomy career information. 
And I'm the person to get in touch with if you have questions about the astronomy specializations, if you need a minor form signed, if you're you know, an astronomy major and are taking a minor in something else, I'll need to sign part of that. General career related questions are also welcome. Um, so you should contact me at this email address here. Um, I think we're going to keep things over email and you know Zoom appointments if necessary this year. Uh, my office is probably not the greatest ventilated spot in the uh, university, so I'd rather keep in-person meetings to a minimum. That said, if you really need to see me in person, send me an email about that and um, uh, we'll work something out. Otherwise, yeah, send send an email and if I don't respond right away, um, you know, just send me a reminder. I do get um, somewhere between 100 and 200 emails every day. So occasionally a thing will slip past me without absolutely registering on my consciousness. So bug me if you need to. Uh, but hopefully I'll get to everybody's uh, requests in time. All right. Well, I wish all of you a really good year. And, um, you know, don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions about things.